Well, good morning. How are you all today? And welcome to Integrative Preparedness. I am Steve Smith. They are they're targeting the small towns of this country and the smaller counties uh, with illegal aliens, and they are flooding our country. And I'm going to tell you why I think it is. We got another four million headed our way. I talked about that the other day, and I talked about how. Uh, how they were targeting the small towns, but I want to get into it because I want to lay out what I think their game plan is on this. I, you know, the game plan is to destabilize our country, but I think there's a particular reason that they're targeting the smaller towns and smaller counties. Um, before we get to that, a couple of things. I, I used a term the other day, Rooster Poo, Wisconsin, and I wanted to give credit to, uh, to who gave me that idea, and it was um, Diggin... Goon Schmidt, and I'm I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right, Diggin Goon, uh, but he said he said in one of his his um, uh, comments that he had I was searching for I I referenced uh, you know like two corners whatever and he said he had a teacher one time that whenever he wanted to, to bring out a kind of a fictitious small town place he said Rooster Poo Wisconsin, so that comes from Diggin Goon Schmidt. Thanks Diggin Goon. And, uh, and I'm going to use it. I, I told him I was going to steal that. And I might change it to, to, uh, to Rooster Poo, Missouri or something like that. But I, I think that's great. That's going to be my, my, new, my new fictitious name, I think, for, for smaller towns. And, you know, it, the one that doesn't even have a dot on the, on the map, right? Uh, and by the way, today's question over on the Patreon chats is... Uh, it's three days till Christmas. Are you giving any preparedness-themed gifts <clears throat> to anybody this year? And and we've already got some great answers. I, th I think that's that's just great. If you're not with us on Patreon, the link's down below. We'd love to have you. We do a lot of stuff over there. You'd like it. Um, so I talked yesterday about, or was it the day before? It doesn't matter, uh, about the fact that that they're sending many of these illegal aliens and when we're getting 12,000 a day now, illegals, not legal, illegals, you know, and into it that are being released into our country. We know that the, the federal government government is, uh, is assisting, is aiding and abetting in this. Uh, Texas has taken steps. I'm not going to get into that. I already did. But more and more of the states are taking steps to fight against this this failure on the part of the federal government to do their constitutional duty, and uh, and, and so it's, it's going to be left up to the the uh, the state and and the local government, uh, <clears throat> community services, law enforcement, health services, all of these kinds of things. And somebody uh, I read, I mentioned that I had read uh, a number of, uh, or this might have been a comment. And then I checked it out. Uh, a, a whole lot were dumped into Sykeston, Missouri. That's down in the Boot Hill. It's not a place that you would, you know, think that they would be sending a bunch of illegals. Until I got to thinking about it. And then somebody came on and said that they had, uh, that there was something in Texas County, Missouri, a flood of, of illegals into Texas County, Missouri. A very, very pretty county. It's in the Ozarks. Uh, and, and all of the benefits that they got when they got their federal benefits, when they got there. I wasn't able to find anything on that, but I did find, and I've known this for a long time, that there has been a large Somali uh, influx into McDonald County, Missouri, uh, which is the, the farthest uh, uh, down in the southwest corner of Missouri. It's just in the Ozarks. Beautiful, beautiful county. Uh, I had looked at buying uh, property there in McDonald County until I learned about this several years ago, and I'll, there's no way that I'll do it now. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, if, if you have personal experience, personal knowledge about these things happening, uh, please uh, send me the link. Send me some supporting, you know, material on it. If you send a link, it won't appear in the comments. It'll be caught by by the filters because I don't allow links on on their on the comments on the YouTube. You can put links on Patreon but not on YouTube. It's just just because I've decided not to allow them. 
and uh, but I will see them because I will check the filters and see what got cut up. So if I see your your comment and it's got a link in it, I'll hit the link. I'll see what you've sent me, and then maybe I'll be able to cover it. So go ahead, you can do that. So why are they sending these? These why why are they sending? Why are they targeting? Let me put it that way. And they are they are targeting small towns and counties. Okay. Here's what I think. And, uh, and uh, well, they've already got pretty good control over the cities. Okay. Now, now by that, and there's a lot of people that misunderstand what, what people mean by the cities. What I mean by the corporate cities, the actual city. For instance, uh, the Kansas City area is made up of the city of Kansas City. Uh, well, there's two Kansas cities. There's Kansas City, Missouri, which is the big one, and Kansas City, Kansas, which is a smaller one on the Kansas side. Uh, both of those are, are uh, urban, densely packed urban areas. Kansas City, Missouri, for instance, only has a population of about 400,000. The metro Kansas City area has a population of over 2 million. So, you know, when, when those of us who talk about, who know what about cities, talk about the cities, we're, we're not talking about the, the first you know, the first stoplight that you hit when you come in from the country, we're talking about the actual city. And then outside of those are suburbs. And, uh, you know, some are very nice and some are not nice at all. So, so you know, you can't make the, the overall judgment on, oh, suburbs are horrible. And some are horrible and some are great. Anyway, that was just a little side note for so, you know, because some people need to realize that. Um, they already have control over the cities. They have control over the cities because of the poverty and the number of government employees that are in cities. The people who depend on government checks, okay? Either it's a paycheck or it's a welfare check or something. Now, there are plenty of other people in the city who don't fall into that, that category, but there's a disproportionate percentage of people in cities that uh, rely on the government for their bread. Okay, uh, and so that's why it's it's easy to control those people. Uh, as you get out into the suburbs, it's more difficult. But they have had a hard time controlling the countryside and the small towns. Now, it's it's not that there aren't people in the country and in small towns who aren't dependent on government assistance. There are there are plenty of people in in the country and the small towns that receive welfare and plenty of farmers that, that receive money for not planting. Okay. There's all sorts. I mean, it, I was amazed one time when a farmer I knew told me all the federal programs that he was getting money uh, for, and it made me want to buy land and do nothing with it just to get some money. But that's, that's not a, it's not a crack on the farmers who do that. It's just simply the way it is. See, they, they try, this is the way they manipulate and control the food production. Oh, it has been for years, nothing new. And they, they have, the countries and the small towns have also had, uh, uh, for the most part, not, not that, um, it, this isn't a general uh, observation. Uh, there are some brilliant people in the small towns. And in the countryside, there are some very wealthy people in small towns in the countryside. But overall, the people in the more uh, rural areas have a, a lower uh, level of education, a lower level of health care, a lower level of health itself, uh, a lower um, um, f financial level. Okay, all, all of those things. But still, they have resisted. The, the, the government hasn't been able to be in control of them. Well, here's why I think they're sending, they're targeting these small areas. Because these, these smaller areas have all, also been the, the voting blocks for the conservative candidates. Okay, you, you look at, for instance, the, the, the county by county uh, map of who voted for who. And well, you go on back however long you want to. You will always always see red all over the country. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. You know this, uh, but red all over the country with these little blue dots all over the place, right? And those are the cities, and they vote Democrat 
and all the rest of the country votes Republican. Red, right? Well, the problem is, is that acres don't vote, people do. And, and because they have crammed so many people into these cities and some of the suburban areas, that they get the votes of the people. Now, we know that, you know, I mean, the old saying was the election's not over until the cemetery votes are in. Um, that, that's been a joke forever. This is nothing new. You know, uh, uh, JFK was put in uh, with, with the dead out of Chicago. So this isn't anything new, but we've known it. However, still, the people in the rural areas and the small towns have not been under the same control of the federal government as the people in the cities. This is why they're doing it. They're shipping these illegals into the small towns and the small counties, towns and counties that don't have the infrastructure to support them. They don't have the, the uh, health care uh, delivery system to support them. They don't have the law enforcement to deal with it. They don't have the social services to deal with it. They don't have the homeless shelters to deal with it. Um, and so they're, they're over, they're flooding them uh, and they're overwhelming these small towns and counties. And as these people come into these counties, there are going to be problems. Now, the sad thing is, the very sad thing is that, and, and I, won't, I won't say that it's necessarily sad. The interesting thing is, interesting thing is, is a lot of these people in the small towns are welcoming. Now, small town people aren't, well, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. But they, ha they have not stood up and resisted this. They, 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 they grumble and, you know, and, you know, the world's changing. Can you believe, you know, they'll, they'll talk at the local restaurant and at church and to each other. Can you believe what's happening? I never thought it would be like this, you know? Okay. Well, okay. You have to do more than talk and nobody's really doing more than talking right now. And not, not that I see, and I, I have contacts in many different areas. Um, I'll tell you something that, um, matter of fact, I was talking to a guy I know who owns a restaurant in uh, Clinton, Missouri, population 10,000. And, uh, and he told me some very interesting things that I'm going to, I'm going to put into another video here pretty soon. So I just, I say that because it's not like I don't know what I'm talking about. I do have contacts in pretty much every, every level of society. So I see what's going on. That, that's just, that's just the result of, you know, the things I've done in my life and, and such as that. Um, so they are targeting the small towns and the small counties. They're going to overwhelm them with illegal aliens. And then these, when it really gets bad, the only thing these small counties and cities can do, towns, is to ask for government assistance. That's all. That's all they can do. You send a thousand illegal aliens from, I don't care whether it's Venezuela, China, Timbuktu, to a place like Clinton, Missouri, they can't handle it. They, it, 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 it will collapse that town. And, and it would collapse most small towns across America. So that's what I think is going on here. And I think they're going to continue. You all have heard, I mentioned it the other day, about this caravan of, of uh, apparently 4 million uh, refugees headed our way from down south. 4 million. First off, the Border Patrol and whoever's down there can't even begin to handle that. Secondly, the Border Patrol is apparently acting against the states, and I hate to say that because I have friends on the Border Patrol. Uh, they're, they're acting against the state. They're acting against the American people by allowing these, these illegals to enter our country. So there's no way this, this country is going to be able to absorb that. It shouldn't be absorbed at all. None should be getting in. There shouldn't be a single person in this country who did not come here legally because that's the purpose of a border. And we have immigration policy in place. We've used it for years. But the Democrats, of course, use 
use these for political power. So anyway, that's what I think is going on. They're, they're going to keep bringing these people in, and they are going to target and collapse small towns and smaller counties. And this is one of those situations, you know, uh, if you live in a smaller town or a small county, boy, I, I would suggest you get involved to however much you can in the political processes of your town and your county. And you might say, well, nothing can be done. Well, that might be because you have corrupt people in your city councils or in your county commissions or whatever like that. And you just have to work hard. You have to try to change it. It can be changed. It's been changed many places. And so the excuse that nothing can be done and all politics is, you know, the fix is in. Well, the fix is often in, but the fix has often been fixed. And, uh, and it, the difference is those who would put in the work and those who wouldn't. So if you live in a small town or a smaller county, uh, population-wise, I mean, not, not square miles-wise, uh, I'd suggest you, you get busy and see what's going on and strengthen, you know, um, show your county commission, your city council, your sheriff, your chief of police, uh, what you want and don't want and, and share with them that they, you will back them up if they do what's right and you will oppose them if they don't. Because this is the only chance you have. And, uh, Pretty soon, I, I tell you, those areas, this is this is what could make people run to the cities. See, they, they've been wanting to get everybody into the cities. Agenda 2021, Agenda 2030, 15-minute cities. They want everybody into the cities because people are more easily controlled, and you know that. Okay. Well, they, this, I think, is just the next step of why they're trying to do this because you're in a county of, if you're in a county of 3,000 people, and they bring in a a a, a thousand or two thousand illegal aliens from places from Somalia or or uh, Azerbaijan or Sudan or Chad or wherever or Venezuela. It's going to change your county to the point to where you might not want to live there anymore. And, and there will be some who say, I'll stand on my doorstep and I'll fight to the end. And I, I get that. I'm not putting that thought process down. But for the most part, it's, it could make your life. You know how we talk about the, the time to bug out is when it becomes untenable to stay where you are? It could make your town or your county essentially untenable. You have a 1,000 or 2,000 people in a county of 3,000 to begin with, people who don't speak the language, who don't share our culture, who, who uh, <laughs> well, you know, you know what I mean by this, right? So, and that could make you say, it's time to bug out from the place that I thought was the greatest place in the country, greatest place in the world, and now I'm surrounded by people who don't talk my, speak my language, who don't believe in the same things I believe in, who hate me, who uh, are here to destroy me if they're from certain groups, and my government is subsidizing them and their being here. I think this is one of the greatest dangers that has come along in a long time. I'll ask you to share this video. Uh, more people need to be aware of this, and more people need to stand up and start talking about it. And more than talking about it, doing something about it. And the way you do it is politically. I know that's not what many people want to talk about, but that's the war we've got now if we don't want a different one. Okay? All right, do what you can. Before I let you go, I'll remind you that this and all my videos are brought to you by my books, the Stonemont series, the Reversion, the Revival, the Renewal, and Appeal to Heaven, the Blessings of Freedom, and Hostages to Fortune. The complete six novels, a novel series, uh, entailing a great story, but within the story, a uh, complete lesson plan for for s preparing for, surviving, and rebuilding after a complete collapse of everything. They're available uh, through Amazon. The link is down below, and also directly from me, 
uh, through our website stonemont.us. If you want them fast, you got to get them through Amazon. If you want them signed, you get them through me, and I love to do that because I love my relationship with my readers. Matter of fact, the question that I just had over on uh, uh, that I put up over on the Patreon chat today when I said what what preparedness items are you giving at Christmas today? Uh, a number of people said your books, and I, I love to hear that. Thank you so much. Glad you enjoyed them, and I hope your friends will enjoy them as well. So the links are down below there. If you're again, I would love to. If you're not with us on Patreon, we'd love to have you over there, uh, and uh, you'll get so much out of it. It'd be one of the best things you've done. Not just because of what I put on there, because our our excellent patrons who also share a wealth of knowledge with those who are there. So um, think about what I said. It's coming, and I think this is why they're coming. Uh, you need to prepare yourself. You need to talk to your neighbors and your friends and, and share this with them and hopefully get some of them interested enough to try to give some pushback uh, on this politically because that's the only way it's going to stop. So you all have a good day. Remember that we prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow. Get out there today and do something to better your preparedness position because you'll be glad you did. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.